So in preparation of the upcoming video series that I am very, very excited about, back to basics two, there's a couple things that I need tool-wise uh, to complete this video, and one of them you're seeing right here today. Today we're gonna do a little bit of blacksmithing. So what's the problem here? So you can see from this beautiful saw, uh, we have one of the original Forest Service helper handles here, actually this handle. More on this in the future here. But if you look closely, you'll see that this um, has, this repair is, is not, well, that's just not the way it's, neat, it's done. It's got two square nuts on there, uh, jammed together uh, because the pin somehow came missing. This is common with these things. Here's the other side, and this is the way it ought to look. You see right there, so you've got the pin that fits in there and is captured because these two holes are different sizes. This one's a bit smaller than, than this one. Excuse me, this one's a bit smaller than this one. So it keeps it from falling out. So over time they wear and they'll fall out and you'll lose them. And so it, when it's closed, it needs to fit like this. And I'll show you, well, in the end, we'll show all this all works. So, but what we need to do is we need to make one of these. We need to forge one of these anew. A brand new one, not something you can buy anymore. These things are just, just not made anymore. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and we'll remove this and forge a brand new piece. Now, I am not a professional blacksmith. I'm actually not even very good at it. I am an amateur, a layman. I'm learning. Uh, but I have made rivets in the past, and this is the tool that I have made to make this rivet right here. It's two pieces of steel that I have drilled a hole through. I clamped, it, clamped them together and drilled, and what this allows me to do is to make rivets like this when we clamp it in the vise. So what we're gonna be using for material, you can see here that I've got a, this is a, an old Allen wrench. Now Allen wrenches are made of tool steel, super high quality, really great tool steel. So if you see them at garage sales, you always wanna snatch them up. Never throw Allen wrenches away, keep those around. Even if you don't blacksmith now, if it's something you may be doing in the future, they make really good, really, really great um, uh, stock for material like this. And this one in particular is very nice because you can see right there, it fits, I can't turn it, it fits tightly, it's the perfect size. Yes, it's octagon, but we'll forge this and, and work it out, hopefully, and uh, make a nice new rivet out of this piece. So let's get the, uh, the wood-fired blacksmith forge fired up and we'll see if we can't uh, get, this, uh, get this corrected. So we've got some really nice, pretty straight grain Douglas fir here that we'll use in the forge. Man, Doug fir, it, the forge likes the Doug fir. So I think I've pretty well explained what needs to be done or what we're gonna do. I'm gonna not do a, a lot of commentary on this video, but Try to show you the details and tell the story without me going on and on. No time to crank the sun dry our hair before we go no time to lay around we'll come back someday no time to change our mind
stronger, stronger now. My heart still beats, and my skin still feels. My lungs still breathe, my mind still feeds. But we're running out of time. Ooh, all the echoes in my mind cry. You know, I've done several videos like this um, without any commentary, repairing these old tools. And, you know, there's always some, there's always some folks that would prefer having a step-by-step -step or me talking while I'm doing it. But for me, this is, um, I don't, it's hard to put it into words um, without sounding a little bit strange. But to me, it, it's, it's a very special moment. It's a very special two hours spent doing something. And when I fill it up with talking and commentary, it seems to take away from, I guess, the meaning of it or the joy that I received coming from it. And I, I think if a guy can tell a story uh, without speaking and convey that sense of emotion that speaking oftentimes just gets in the way of and destroys, then... I just don't know that you could do any better than that. So that's kind of why I do that. This is a, I'm not going to talk any more about this particular saw, <clears throat> but it is, uh, but I will be very shortly in the future. It's a very, very, very special once in a lifetime type of a tool. And having this type of, uh, of a repair on it, I, it just didn't sit right with me. I, uh, would never been satisfied with that. And I, and I don't fault, I'm certainly not going to fault someone, whoever it was that, that made this repair like this, because I don't know, you know, I haven't walked in his shoes. I don't know what took place. I don't know if it was a, if it was a speedy field repair or, or who knows what. Because, I mean, if you were out working and you needed to use something like this, what we did today is just not possible. And you do what you have to do to get the job done. And, and I understand that. I've done that myself and will continue to do so. But... Given the time, when you have the time, it's always good if you can to get back and, and to do things, put it back the way it's supposed to be.